In today's video, we're going to design a sleek and a funky UI slider. And during the tutorial, you're going to pick up some handy techniques for all kinds of other possible design solutions. As you may already know, I streamline and optimize my design projects with Millinote. And this is for an ultimate functionality and time saving. Now to learn more about Millinote and also the recent updates and how I make my life so much more efficient and so much easier, stay tuned to the very end of today's video. So firstly, I think it's wise to design your slider on an RGB document. And that's simply because UI sliders are mainly web-based graphics, but also because some of the effects in the video will actually look smoother on an RGB format. Now you can make your slider as wide or as short as possible, but for mine, I'm gonna make a shape like this, and I use the rectangle tool, which is M on your keyboard. So for the funky design, we need some equally spaced circles. And for that, come to the line tool here, hold down a click, and then select the polar grid tool. Simply double click the artboard with this tool in use, and then we can set up a few settings. Now the first two numbers need to be the same, and this will determine the size of the largest shape in pixels. Below that will determine the number of the circles used, and then the bottom number needs to be zero, which you're probably gonna have to type in. And then when ready, click OK. So once you have the circles, ungroup them twice in the top drop-down menu. And as you can see, my rectangle tool fits nicely into the shape selection. Now select all of the circles and then add a fill. However, we're going to use a gradient fill. And I'm gonna use a radial gradient, which is the middle of the three gradient choices in Illustrator CC. And I'm gonna apply four color nodes. To add a color node, just click on the slider like so. Now you can of course make any kind of gradient and use as many or as few colors as you want. You might want to spend some time playing around with your gradient until it feels perfect, but we can come back to this later. So the gradient isn't laid over my design as I would like it to be, and so I can press G for the gradient tool, and then click somewhere on my design and then just outstretch the gradient. Now I don't really want my gradient central because I quite like having a lighter section above and then a darker section below. We're now going to add a really neat effect in one swift move. And to do that, come into the appearance panel, click the effects button and navigate to a drop shadow option. This is going to add a drop shadow to every single circle all at once and you can pause the video to check out the settings that I'm using for my drop shadow. And once you do have that drop shadow generated, you can come into the menu and adjust things at any point in your design process. So now we have the circle design created, we can actually work on the slider itself. Now make sure your rectangle is brought to the front of all objects and then drag it over the top of your design. You're going to want to position it properly and then scale it to the edges. And if you are using Illustrator CC, press A for the direct selection tool and then click and drag the live corners. Now, if you guys don't have CC, you can use the round corners effect found in the top drop down menu. Now select everything, right click and create a clipper mask. And that's looking pretty funky and pretty neat but I would like to make the design slightly faded. And to do that, we can come into the recolor artwork option. In this section of the recolor artwork panel, we can adjust the saturation, the brightness and so forth. And of course, this decision completely comes down to your design choices. So we are close to the finish line, but there are just a few more important steps we need to make to finish off the vector slider design. So open up the appearance panel one more time, but this time we're going to apply an inner glow to the slider background. 
For the blend mode, I'm using hard light and the color I'm using is black. The blur and the opacity numbers you can play around with, of course. And I feel this effect looks pretty decent and it does elevate the design to that next level. So press L for the ellipse tool and then place your cursor at the very top of the design. Hold down shift and then click and drag to make a circle. So drag the circle to the edge of your design and then hold down both the Alt Option key and Shift and then click and drag to scale the circle downwards. You also might want to slightly lower the opacity of the circle and this will just tie it together with the design really nicely. So we are nearly finished, but there are just two more crucial steps that we need to make. We of course do need a background and for this, I created a soft gradient with the Freeform Gradient tool, which is exclusive to Illustrator CC users. You can, of course, use the mesh function in older versions of Illustrator. Now, this slider looks awesome on a neat background like this. And we finally are going to once again come into the appearance panel. And this time we're going to apply a drop shadow to the slider design itself. And I'm going to use a normal blend mode and a blue color. And that's simply because blue is on my background at the bottom here. Now as a graphic designer, I do feel the need to have functionality and streamline planning at my fingertips. And that's why I've partnered with Millinote for two years, but it's also why I use them for every single design project that I work on. It's visual planning for us designers, and as a logo designer, that's absolutely crucial. But it's a lot more than just that. As you can see on screen, I've invited a work partner onto this project board, and they can leave comments and even emoji reactions. I can also do that too, and this offers a teamwork functionality and also a client to designer relationship dynamic. With Millinotes, you can create lists, mood boards, notes, typography choices, drag and drop imagery, and so much more. Now it has become a staple of my design process, and if you want to learn more about Millinote and also to sign up for free, click the link in the description box below and head over to the sponsor of today's video, Millinote. If you want to learn more about making money as a graphic designer or just boosting those skills, subscribe to my channel for weekly graphic design content, and of course, click a video on screen. Until next time guys, design your future today. Peace.